the director of the Stakeholders Relations Directorate of the APC Presidential Campaign Council, Nuhu Ribadu, says the job of the directorate is to cut out is cut out for them because they have a quote sellable candidate in the person of Bola Ahmed Tinubu. While speaking at the inauguration of the directorate, Ribadu says the party has a candidate who has been tried and tested through several positions they held in the past, including being a former governor of Lagos State. The former APC interim chairman, Abisi Akonde, conducted the inauguration. Our directorate, our responsibility is to market him, and we are going to do that. We have a material that Nigerians will believe in, that can make a difference for this country, can do the work in politics, wherever, whoever you come up with. People will say things. People will create things. It's a contest. It's a competition. What we are trying to do, others are trying to bring you down. And it's understandable. But what matters is for the Nigerians to decide. You would have observed that we commenced our campaign with having town hall meetings, sectoral town hall meetings. We did uh, organize private sector. We've done one in agriculture. We've had one today on the mining sector. And we'll continue to engage stakeholders directly through town halls meetings. We believe that the APC has demonstrated capacity. We also believe that our candidates stand head and shoulders above all the other contestants running for this um, presidential campaign. Well, joining us to shed more light on the economic ideas in Tunubu's manifesto is Femi Pedro, a former deputy governor of Lagos State. Thank you so much for joining us and good to see you I'm glad after to be here. such a long time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we'll get into Tunubu's manifesto. Of course, he's been having meetings with the private sector and what have you. But let's first, you know, address uh, the statement made by Rabbi Musa Kwankwasu, the presidential candidate of the NNPP, who says that Tinubu's uh, choice as uh, the flag bearer of the APC was a mistake. And we also heard from Atiku Abaka, the presidential candidate of the PDP, actually today, say you know, that he doesn't even think that the APC will survive uh, beyond uh, 2023 because the party, according to him, is just an alliance and not a party. I'd like you to react to all of this and the, the idea that, uh, you know, Tinubu is sellable on the one hand and that he may be a burden on the other hand. I think you should just disregard or ignore all those political talk. He's jiving. You expect that in a political environment. Um, I'm here to discuss serious matter, matter of the economy, what Ashiwa Bola means Tinubu has to offer. Mm. to Nigerians. I think that's more important. Okay, okay. so let's okay. talk about right. that. The Nigerian let me, let me economy is saddled with... That. Uh, uh, yeah. let's, let's just get into right. this right away. The Nigerian economy is saddled with a high debt burden. Mm. Our population continues to grow exponentially. And your candidate, your principal says he hopes to achieve a double digit GDP growth. How? It's very exciting. When you hear that from a candidate, it gives you hope. That's False why false hope. No hope can be defined differently. That is why the manifesto is termed renewed hope. The World Bank estimate for Nigerian economic growth for 2023 is 3%. Mm -hmm. And Ashwa Jubal Ahmed Nubu is targeting 10%. And there's a reason behind mm -hmm. this. Right. The template of his economic blueprint says first, I want to restore confidence back to the Nigerian economy. And when an economy has that confidence, investors are encouraged to come back to Nigeria. The second point in his manifesto, he wants to bring Nigeria back to the era of industrialization. Nigeria is going to be a country of manufacturers a country of producers, a country of inventors. Mm -hmm. This is his plan. And how does he want to achieve this? First, he will provide the foundational base for the economy to grow, infrastructure. Let me tell you, the last survey of the manufacturing sector mm -hmm. done on Nigeria, why the manufacturing sector is not doing well, mm -hmm. They mentioned three issues. One is high inflation. Second is instability in the exchange 
rate regime and third is very high cost of energy power transportation mm -hmm. Ashwa Nubu is very clear in the manifesto how he intends to tackle these three areas i would like to hear exactly how he intends to do that uh, okay. doubling the gdp uh, that stands presently at about 440 uh, billion era, he says he'll double it uh, to about 800 and but would no, like to no, hear no. the it, details it's not doubling the GDP it's okay. moving it from 440 to 533 billion dollars mm -hmm. that is a 10 percent increase over a year period right okay and that is very very doable and how wow. is he going to do that mm -hmm. he's going to turn Nigeria into a country of producers and manufacturers we are a major importers of commodities and non essentials today we spend 90 percent of our foreign exchange and is bringing in goods and he wants to change that mm -hmm. and that is not difficult to change Nigeria used to be like this before investors are just waiting for the right environment mm -hmm. to come in and start producing and manufacturing and that's not the only way he wants to do it right. there are 130 million young people in nigeria they are very smart they are very energetic they are ready to work many of them are IT, ict savvy Ashwa Jibola Metsungu is going to create that enabling environment and tap into the bundle of energy they have. In fact, it is from that he wants to create one million jobs within the first 24 months mm -hmm. of his ad administration. And it's not that he's going to employ one million people. Right. He's going to, I mean, make the private sector create that job. Investors are waiting. They're pulling back because they are not sure of what is going to happen. Mm -hmm. But let me tell you, with this manifesto, when Ashwa Jibola met Tinubu is sworn in as president, the announcement effect, even of that, will create a massive change. It's a game changer. Yeah, you talk about the foundation that he's going to lay. Will yeah. it include power? Of course, he talked about, you know, providing power. But Nigeria needs, according to experts, Nigeria needs $80 billion needed for infrastructure for the next 10 years yes right so how exactly is he going to get that funding to provide the enabling environment for the manufacturing sector to thrive and the organized private sector that you talk about how is he going to do that first of all the country cannot provide all the infrastructure in it needs overnight right it takes a while and let's give credit to this administration of president muhammadu buhari has done a lot. He has taken giant strides in the pro pro provision of infrastructure in Nigeria. And it has come with creative means of financing. In this period, we've used Sukok method of financing. We've also used producers and manufacturers to build infrastructure and take tax credit from it. This has never been done in Nigeria before. Nobody thought it could happen. It has happened. Ashwaju will build on this. And he's going to do it. He's going to connect the entire nation with regional highway that will move goods from factory to consumers, from farm to city center to the urban centers. And of course, take power as a foregone conclusion. He knows that he cannot grow GDP mm -hmm. by 10% without providing power. I've told you that control of inflation is very key. See, in this economy, there are three prices, and they are very key. Mm -hmm. Inflation, that's the measure of the cost, uh, uh, the rise in cost of goods from one period to the other. That's over 20%. Okay. Interest wow. rate, that's the cost of money. Mm -hmm. Exchange rate, that's the cost of foreign exchange. Those three prices are very key. And the reason why our economy is not healthy today is because we have not been able to manage those three prices. Talking the about most, managing. The, the most important <laughs> of mm -hmm. the three prices mm -hmm. is in, uh, inflation rate. Mm -hmm. And once we are able to put that in check, and how do you put inflation rates in right. check? See, there are two types of inflation. The what economists call demand pool inflation. Mm -hmm. That is inflation caused by too much money chasing too few goods. Good. That's not Nigerian's problem. <laughs> it's not even enough money to chase goods. Mm. Is this a supply or cost push inflation that is our problem? Mm. And most of it is important <coughs> inflation because we bring in goods from abroad and then our uh, currency is weak. 
So every time there is a devaluation, there is an inflationary effect of that. So we focus on that. Once we bring in exchange rate stability, the economy will stabilize. Inflation will be reduced. Mm. And see, the reason why investors are not coming mm. is because they are looking at the rate of inflation. If the rate of inflation is 20.5 percent, they are saying to themselves that if I'm going to bring money to this economy, how much am I going, to, am I going to get out? Okay. What is my return Great. on investment? Great. If it is less than 20 percent, they will not come. So a lot of people are listening to you, and I'm sure they are wondering if your candidate, who is also a leader of your party, had a lot of these ideas. Why has he not brought it to the table? But let me ask you, because you talked about <laughs> managing. <laughs> uh, you can, ask, you can respond to the, uh, okay. uh, sorry, it's with the question I'm about to ask you. Okay. Uh, so you talk about managing. Uh, looking at your manifesto, your candidate did say he wants to shift the economy's focus away from oil dependent. Yes. And you talked about industrialization. Yes. However, he's talking about increasing oil production uh, in, in the next four, seven years, yes. uh, two millions of uh, barrels yes. per day. Mm -hmm. And the question is, the IOCs, who are the heavy spenders, yeah. are divesting away from Nigerian oil. Sure. How does your candidate hope to? So what it means is that while he tries to focus away from oil, yeah. in the meantime, he still mm -hmm. needs the money we make from oil yes. to run the country, run should it. he become president. So yeah. how exactly is he going to do that when the big guys are leaving? There's oil theft. And the subsidy hand. and all of that. See, the one place that requires restoration of confidence is the oil sector. And all Ashwaju Bola Metsumbu wants to do in the oil tech sector is to bring back that confidence. The IOC are not leaving Nigeria. They are living onshore and they are still in offshore. They are still drilling. Okay, so they have not left Nigeria completely. But they're completely. divesting away from the, the, big, yes, the bigger because, uh, playground. Because mm -hmm. there is restiveness in that sector mm -hmm. right now. And once sanity is restored, and how do you restore sanity? Clean up the sector. Make sure oil theft is no longer the issue. Right. Make sure corruption is removed. Liberalize the sector. It's going to liberalize the sector. It's going to open it up. So that investors, they're just watching. Once they see that move, they will come back to the sector. And it's not only IOC. Okay. Mm -hmm. Even Nigerian investors in the oil sector, even medi medium-sized investors in mm -hmm. the oil sector will bring back. And let me also answer the second part of your question. Mm -hmm. Increasing oil production to 4 million barrels per day by 2025, mm -hmm. that's what the manifesto says, is mutually exclusive with industrializing Nigeria. They are not in, I mean, they are not in conflict. Okay. Because today we need the oil money. <laughs> Re Re revenue is Absolutely. important. Do you understand? Yeah. So today we are producing less than one million barrel per day. So if we increase it, revenue increases. We're able to meet our obligation, service our debt. Why we are working on industrialization? Why we are now building infrastructure? Why we are encouraging investors to come into Nigeria? Mm -hmm. And why, why will investors want to come back? He has said it in the manifesto. I'm going to use in in incentives to bring them back. International brands who used to be here before. I was a credit officer in the banking industry many mm -hmm. years ago. I used to bank major international brands. Procter and Gamble was here, mm -hmm. was here before. Nikemtex, Nikem the te major right. textile company, was here before. Glaxo, uh, uh, Gla mm -hmm. Smith Klein, Smith 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 Klein was yeah. here before. Mm -hmm. Many of them will come back. They will come back if we give them tax rebate. If you give them incentives to come back, if okay. you give them things that they want to see, and if inflation, if they know that the, con the government is fighting inflation mm -hmm. truly, they will come back. And so this Fantastic. is where the efforts uh, are going to be. Very quickly, in 30 seconds, what would be the alternative to fuel subsidy? When he says he will scrap fuel subsidy, what alternative is he putting on the table? Oh, well, f first of all, there is no other option mm. but to remove fuel subsidy. What would okay. be the option? So the first, first thing first, we are hoping that by the middle of next year, the Angote refinery will come on stream. Mm. We don't have to import refined petrol anymore. It will be here locally. Mm -hmm. The prices will be much more attractive than us bringing them abroad. Okay. Now, the money saved from fuel subsidy is going to pump that back into this same economy, particularly to help those who will suffer 
from the high increase in fuel prices. And he said this openly. He said the people who enjoy subsidy of petrol are people like me, people like you. No, no, no. Okay. Not people like us. <laughs> okay. You speak for your candidate. <laughs> okay. No, I, I can't say that. I, I have okay. a car. Do you have a car? <laughs> we'll have to do you have a car? Do you have a car? Have to live there. Thank so you if so you much. have a car, a car, you enjoy it? Well, I'm hoping to change my car, but I oh, can't. Oh, yeah, but you enjoy the Mr. subsidy. Mr. Sammy Pedro. But the man who doesn't have a car doesn't enjoy the Mr. subsidy. Mr. Sammy Pedro is the is a former deputy governor of Lagos State and a member of uh, the campaign council? Yes. Yes. We wish your candidate the best. Thank you very much. Thank you.